Jesus to take your burden away. Right. Amen. Leaning on the everlasting arms. Uh, I think we may have sang this last Sunday, but I want to hear that choir jump in on there. Leaning on Jesus. We got to know who we're leaning on. Amen. not leaning on him you're not going to make it I can promise you that boy it's good to see all of you we've got a special day in many respects we've got revival meetings starting today we've got veterans day I know it's tomorrow but we're going to make a big deal out of it today we make a big deal out of veterans every day so we're we're patriotic around here and so we like the flag and all that thank the lord and if you're a flag nailer you probably won't enjoy the service this morning I can tell you that right now so because we're already against you. We like the flag and love our country. We love America. And thankful for those that have served, too. What a blessing. Thank God for people that serve. That's why we're able to be here this morning, because we've had men and women serve through all these generations. And many of them gave their lives, too, the ultimate price, so that we can have what we have. God's been good to us. Let's ask our ushers to come up today. All right. My stomach's already growling. We've got all these, this time change. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. No, I'll forget about it when Brother Tony starts preaching. It'll be good. All right. We'll bow together and ask the blessing on the offering this morning. And Brother Thomas, lead us in prayer, please. Lord, thank you for this day. Amen. Yes. Lord, thank you for Jesus. Today. Amen. 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 Amen.
Tomorrow is Veterans Day, and so we like to do something every year for our veterans. And we've got a little video we're going to show this morning. And uh, everybody just stay seated, but it's going to have some music on it. And if you were in the military, any branch, and you hear the music, you may not know the music from your branch, but if you hear it, we'd like for you to stand during the video. We've had several people give pictures, and if we didn't get them by last Sunday, we probably didn't get them in, but they'll be in for next time. But anyway, that was the cutoff. But anyway, uh, we've got pictures of before and after. It's going to be pretty cool. So anyway, just our little token and appreciation of those that have served our country.
That was a medley of all of them. That's wonderful. And we thank you all again for your service. But all of you here, how many people do we have that have served in a branch of the military? Would you please stand? We'll see you all at once. Look at this. How about that? Praise the Lord. Now, hold on. Don't sit down. If you're willing, I want you to come right up this way. And I want you all to come right across here. And I want you just to tell who you are. Tell what branch you're in. How many years you served. Or what years you served. And if you was in any conflicts or wars, tell us that too if you don't mind. And so y'all just come on up. And we've got some buffets for you to Don Steakhouse. So that's the best place to eat in town. And so anyway, <laughs> my opinion. But uh, we've got these for you. And we want to make sure you all get one of these. And Brother Tommy's really sick today, but he's getting one. So we'll make sure he gets one this morning. And so if you served, we want you to come. And y'all go ahead and come. And uh, come this way. Start up right through here. Amen. Y'all come on up. So I want to give you a buffet. I served from uh, 84 to 88 in the uh, regular army, and then I served in the National Guard from uh, uh, 88 to, I uh, think, 92. Amen. Terry Wallace, United States Air Force, 68 to 72, three and a half years, Presidential Guard, Richard Nixon. Amen. 1968. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Mac Mackey. I served in the U.S. Army from 79 to 90. Amen. Becky Wynn, I served at the United States Navy from 1992 to 1994. All right. Wayne Wynn, I was in the National Guard from 82 to 88. All right. Dylan Davis, I was in the National Guard from 91 to 99. Bruce Sheets, National Guard, 67 to 73. Buck Jones, from 1953 to 1973. Amen. Served in Korea. And Vietnam. Amen. And the Marines. Marines. Terrell Richardson was in the Army from 1956 to 59, spent 25 years in reserves. Oh, that's awesome. Scott Hancock, United States Army, 1984 to 1988. Artillery, King of Battle. Richard DeWitt, I was in the regular Army, National Guard, Marine Corps, 1970-1977, and I'm a Vietnam veteran. Amen. Okay. Okay. Served 1955-56 to, sorry, 55 to 60. 60 to 66 in regular Army, stationed in Korea and Germany. Amen. Donna Duncan, I saved, served in the United States Air Force as an officer. I served from 82 to 86, and it was during the Cold War. Ray Whitmire, spent six years in the United States Marine Corps, 1983 to 1989, and am currently serving active duty, Texas Army National Guard. Amen. Mark Van Rook, regular Army, 1987 to 1993, was in Operation Just Cause, Panamanian Invasion. Amen. Dale Ryder, United States Army, from 1986 to 1989. Amen. Randall Howard, National Guard, uh, 93 to, or I'm sorry, 97 to 03. Uh, serving the Sinai Peninsula, Egypt. Uh, Chris Barber, 
served in 99 to 2002 National Guard, and I was with him in the Sinai in Egypt. Hey, how about that? Yeah. <laughs> Rudy LeBlanc, U.S. Army, 84 to 88. Mary Boyd, um, United States Air Force from 89 to 93. Let's give them all a buck hand. Yeah. Yeah. We're living in a country that doesn't appreciate what they have. You got people like Jane Fonda that's a traitor of our country. You got people that spit on troops as they come back from Vietnam, and it's a shame is what it is. It's crying shame. And anyway, thank God for these veterans, these people that served our country like they did. I thank God every day for them. And we need to pray for those that are serving even right now. There's people on missions that me and you don't know anything about risking their life right now. Who knows where they're at? And, but God does. And so let's pray for them and keep them in our prayers. All right. Thank you all. Praise the Lord.
cried out to crucify. They nailed him to a rugged cross and left him there to die. They gambled for the royal robe he wore, not knowing they had crucified my Lord, who bore the sin and shame for all mankind. And as he hung there dying, I was on his mind. His sacrifice and love some don't appreciate. But I would like to speak and set the record straight. That's my God, and I love Him. That's my Jesus, He died for me. and mocked his name defiantly. Oh, but time never changed the changeless one. Their lies cannot disprove the existence of God's Son. Though some may be content to just sit by. making the sun to shine. Put 
putting the stars in the sky for the flowers that bloom, the ocean so blue. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the sparrow that sings. It makes sweet melody for the rivers that flow, the rain and the snow. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord, for everything that you've done for me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for everything that you've done for me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole, saving my soul. Thank you, Lord. Shoes on my feet, yeah. plenty to yeah. eat. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For the church where I worship and pray. For the freedoms that I have today. Sweet spirit, I feel your presence so real. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. That you've done for me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. For making me whole, saving my soul. Thank you, Lord. For being a friend so dear. Giving my sad heart yes. cheer. For holding my hand when I could not stand. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For giving your life for me on the cross of Calvary. For taking my place, mercy and grace. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. done for me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. For making me hope, saving my soul. Thank you, Lord. For making me hope, saving my soul. Well, we're glad that you're here. We got a special treat for you today. Brother Tony Hudson's with us. How many of you ever never heard Brother Tony preach? Raise your hand. Quite a few of you. He's been here many times through the years, and he's never got to be in our new building yet. But I think he first came, I was thinking back, in 2007. And that's about right. And so that was 11 years ago. We've been friends ever since. And boy, I believe, in my opinion, I don't say this to pump people up, he's one of the best preachers in the United States of America. You always hate to say that right before a guy preaches. He says, oh. <laughs> you know? But anyway, that's how I feel about it. I really do. And the Lord has blessed him and used him in a mighty way. And he's here this week with us through Wednesday, or Tuesday anyway. And we got a meeting going all the way through Wednesday, he and Brother Jim Chandler. So let's remember this in prayer. And Brother Tony, you come preach what God's laid on your heart text in the gospel of Matthew chapter number 7. I believe that's where I'm going. Boy, it's a good atmosphere, isn't it? And, uh, I can't say enough about the beautiful facilities and uh, man, God's blessing this place. A full house is a sign of good success and uh, God's blessing this place. I appreciate the Sunday school hour. If you miss Sunday school, man, you ought to wake up and uh, 
you're privileged to have Brother Derek Collins as your pastor. He's, uh, the Lord's opening more and more doors for him. And uh, he's using him, using the institute. And then that, that uh, class, that auditorium, I guess it's the adult class that I was in. That's, that's stuff y'all need to hear. And you're not going to hear that everywhere. And uh, Y'all take advantage. That means you get up early and be here and all God's people said. There's only two kind of people lives in Walnut Ridge, Arkansas. Those that are members of this church and those that ought to be members of this church. <laughs> Amen. Man, this is a good crowd. Beautiful, man. I can't get over it. I, I want to say more about it, but I, I'd like to speak about 15 minutes this morning. I never have done it, but I've always wanted to. <laughs> In honor to the veterans, I, I was reminded of a little boy who went to church and that preacher just preached and preached and preached and preached. The man reached down under the pulpit, pulled out a bottle of water and drank about half that water and wiped his off his lips and just kept preaching, kept preaching. Hour and hour and a half. And after the service, he walked out into the foyer and there was a big plaque on the wall with men's names on that plaque. And the little boy said to the usher, said, what is this plaque up here? He said, well, these are men that died in the service. He said, which one, morning or evening? He said, brother. <laughs> Amen. That's long-winded, man. One, fe one fellow's preaching long. He'd get to preaching. And, man, he's just fired up. And, and a lady towards the back after about a half hour, she said, preach on, Pharaoh. And he didn't quite understand what she said. It kind of distracted him, so he directed his message over this side of the building. He'd preach about another 15 minutes, and she said, preach on, Pharaoh. And uh, it kept bothering him, you know. And finally, after about 45 minutes, he closed the message, and was at the back door shaking hands, as tradition is. And the lady came by and shook his hand. He said, we're well, glad to have you here. He said, but I didn't quite understand what you were saying a while ago. And she said, I said, preach on, Pharaoh. He said, ma'am, my name's not Pharaoh. She said, oh, yes, it is, because you won't let God's people go. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. I'm going to let you go some, because we got four nights. Now, be back tonight and, uh, and be back Monday and Tuesday. I pastored for the first few years of my ministry in UCLA. That's the upper corner of the lower Alabama. And uh, I, I pastored in Bullock County, Alabama. And uh, if you're white there, you're a minority in Bullock County, Alabama. And our church had experienced some growth, and some of the black pastors in the area invited me to preach at one of their fellowship meetings. And y'all understand I'm white. Is that, uh, you understand I'm Anglo-Saxon to the bone. I mean, I'm so white, they accuse my mother of bathing me in Clorox. I'm white. And I went to that all-black meeting. I'd never been in an all-black worship service. And the preacher got up. And he said, well, I come to Ted this morning. The Lord said, Z -Z. And brother said, yeah. And his sister said, hey, hey, man. And I told y'all I'm white. I was getting nervous, man. My, I looked like my face turned red. I looked like a Q-tip Q -tip dipped in iodine, man. I was red. He said, Brother Tony's with us this morning. Yeah. The Lord said, Zud, Zud. He said, Come lay on us what God has laid on you. And I thought, man, what God laid on me, I forgot. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to preach. I walked to that pulpit. I looked from left to right. I said, well now, I can't do like the brothers do, but I'll do the best I can. That lady said, yeah. And Logan said, zoo, zoo. <laughs> So I'll do the best I can this morning. <laughs> and try to help you. I believe I'm preaching where God had me to preach. I don't think there's a wrong page of the Bible to preach. And preaching's always appropriate. I've been in meetings that say, well, we didn't need no preaching. Well, when the world in his wisdom knew not God, it pleased God through the foolishness of preaching. Not foolish preaching, but the foolishness of preaching to save them would believe. It's God's chosen medium to reach the, the world with the message of the gospel, and God still uses it. Let's focus our attention to chapter number 7, and I'll begin reading verse 13. Page 1004 if you've got a Schofield Bible. I don't agree with all the notes, but I sure agree with the text. Verse 13 says, Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. 
Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Notice the contrast. Verse 15, Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. And every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore by their fruits ye shall know them. And that's referring to the false prophets. False prophets, they abound today. I'll say a word about that this morning. And not everyone that saith unto me, verse 21, Lord, Lord. They got the Christian vernacular. They've got the Christian vocabulary. They talk the talk. But he said, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have not we prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. And then will I profess unto them, one of the saddest statements ever read in the Bible, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Our Heavenly Father, I stand today with arm of flesh has failed me. And these people are no strangers to the absence of power. I, I need your touch. We're familiar enough with the things of God. We're religious enough that we could go through the motions today and say amen at the right spots and nod our heads and, and back the preaching and yet not leave changed. I pray today we'd leave here changed. And I pray for the lost who will hear this message, those that are undone without Christ, condemned already, not waiting on judgment, but they're already condemned, the Bible says. I pray they'd see themselves lost. And at the same time as I try to preach this morning, I pray that saints of God, Christians, church members, would see the brevity of time left for us to reach our loved ones and that you're coming back soon. The sun is setting on the age of grace and very soon you'll, you'll be back for us. The trump of God will sound. The dead in Christ will rise. And help us to be awakened, Lord, to our role in leading our family and friends and community and Yea, Arkansas and America and the uttermost parts of the earth to the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us be weighted with a responsibility when we leave these walls. Save the lost and send revival these days, for we ask these things in Jesus Christ's name. And may long live old time religion until you come again, we pray. Amen. If y'all got a Bible like mine, these are red letters. How many's got a red letter Bible? These are direct quotations of the Lord Jesus Christ. These are not just words of God. I mean, it is all inspired. It's all infallible. It's all impeccable. But these are direct quotations of Christ. This is what Christ said from his own lips. And as he's addressing this congregation, he tells them, I've got some things that you really need to get a hold of about eternity. By the way, if in this life only we have hope, we're of all men most miserable. The rich man died and in hell he lifted his eyes. And your life's but a vapor. The Bible said it's like a, a vapor, a, 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 a breath of steam that appears for a short time then vanishes away. And what the Lord wanted these people to know in this address was, I've got some things about eternity that you better know before you leave this walk of life. And can I say to the saved, this message speaks just as loud to that child of God, to that saved person, that Christian. If you know the Lord, we have a weighty responsibility to go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature, baptizing them in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I've commanded you. And look at me, there's no option to that. You've not chosen me, but he said, I've chosen you. And what he chooses us to do and ordained us to go and bring forth fruit and that our fruit should remain. Ephesians 2.10 said, For we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, unto good works, that God hath before ordained, that we should walk in them. God's got a plan for your life. And that plan is to evangelize the world. And He puts omnipotence behind His commands. He wouldn't ask us to do something we couldn't do. 
And so I have a twofold message. I want us to see as a lost person the words of Christ, how it applies to that person who's, who's on the brink of death and hell, and you don't know. It's appointed unto man. Wherefore, it's appointed man wants to die. You don't know when you're going to go. And it's a message to the saved here that, man, if you've got family that's lost, if you go to school with, with classmates that are lost, if you work on an assembly line or in a factory or in a job with lost friends, one day you'll see them eyeball to eyeball at a great white throne judgment. Revelation declares that we're going to be part of the judge. The Word of God's going to judge the unsaved dead. The Holy Ghost's going to judge the unsaved dead. And the bride of Christ is going to judge the unsaved dead. We're going to look them eyeball to eyeball. You're going to look at your grandchildren that you've never given a clear presentation of the gospel to. That you've avoided conflict. Avoid, avoided all kind of uh, turmoil because they don't want to hear it. But they're going to whoosh that you'd have told them and you'll wish you had too. Amen. And for the lost one under the sound of my voice this morning, let me tell you something. You'll give an account for this very day at that judgment. If you leave this auditorium lost today and die without Christ, hey, you're going to stand there one day eyeball to eyeball with God and you're going to give an account, you'll have to answer for this hour. Part of that judgment will be the unsaved dead we brought up and they'll say, has anybody got anything to say? And if you're here lost today, listen to me, if you're here without the Lord Jesus Christ, and when I finish this message, you leave here lost and undone in rejection to the Holy Ghost and quenching the power of the Holy Ghost and leave here lost at that white throne judgment. I'll have to stand and say, yeah, I got something to say. I was preaching in Arkansas. Walnut Ridge. I was preaching at Gethsemane Baptist Church and that person was there or that lady was there, that man was there, that boy was there, that girl was there and I gave them a clear presentation of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and I warned them about hell and about judgment to come and I gave them a warning and I lift my voice aloud and they walked out in rejection. It's a sobering thought. It's a sobering thought. First thing the Lord wants us to know, listen real close. First thing Jesus wants everybody to know about eternity is that there is a hell. Contrary to popular belief, the Calvinists, they want to say that, you know, we're elected for heaven or hell. I want to say this, that God so loved the world that He gives His only begotten Son. You say, well, what are you applying that to? Well, the Bible said that hell was prepared for who? Hell was prepared for the devil and who? Right. So they believe that a sovereign God, they believe a sovereignty God like I do. But God sure was dumb just to make hell so small. Because God never intended for anybody to go to hell. He only built hell. He only made hell for the devil and his angels. But the Bible said that hell hath enlarged herself. It never was God's plan to send a man to hell. He wanted to send the devil and his angels there. And he made it just big enough for them. That's a good verse. That's a good thought. And he has to enlarge hell for those who reject him. If you leave here rejecting Christ today, hey, if you leave here in denial uh, that you need the Lord, uh, hey, God has to make room for you in hell. He'll make room for you in hell. The rich man died and in hell he lifted his eyes. Hell's not a figment of your imagination. It's a place of weeping and gnashing of teeth. Where the worm never dieth and the fire is not quenched. It's a place of outer darkness. Old Carl Hatch, great soul winner, evangelist, he went up to a biker, tough biker. He tatted all up and had his leather on, had his, had his knife tucked down in his boot. And he walked up to that biker and said, Hey, let me ask you a question. Old Carl talked like this. He said, If you died today, where would you go? That biker said, I'd go to hell. We're going to party. We're partying in hell. By the way, uh, the party's been called off for the fire. Oh, he said, I'm going to hell. I'm going to party down there. We're going we're gonna to get drunk, get stoned. And we're going to have a good time in hell. And old Carl Hatch said, well, you don't mind if I pray with you then, do you? That biker said, I don't give a blank what you do. Old Carl said, this man, God, wants to go to hell. I pray you'd strike him dead right now with a bolt of lightning. 
I pray you'd kill him right now, Lord. He wants to go to hell and party. I pray you'd take him on down. We can have all the fun he wants in hell. That guy said, wait a minute, man. Are you crazy? You crazy? Hey, you may put on a tough show, but you won't be in hell two seconds. Start believing in hell, friend. Hell's a literal place. It's called a bottomless pit. It's called a lake of fire in Brimstone. Hell is real. Hell is real. When you see a volcanic eruption, you are seeing hell. Hey, it's a liquid fire. It's a lake of fire. Hell hath enlarged yourself. Let me tell you, friend, Jesus wants everybody to know. Saved and unsaved, young and old, educated and uneducated. He wants you to know that when you die without Christ, hey, you don't pass, go and collect $200. This ain't Monopoly. This ain't some kind of a game that you'll wake up in a lake of fire and brimstone. You'll be burning forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. He wants you to know hell's real. There is a hell. Second thing he wants you to know is not everybody's going to heaven. Verse 13, in you in it's a straight gate. For broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. That's hell. And many there be which go in there. Look verse 13. Not everybody's going to heaven. That, that, does, not, that does not console me. I, I find, no, I find no, no happiness about that. Some people misunderstand the delivery of a preacher, the fieriness of a preacher, and it's as if he enjoys preaching about hell. Man, I don't want anybody to go to hell. I wish, honestly, now I'm not a Bible corrector, I'm King James, but I wish there wasn't a hell. I wish it was like, I really wish in my human side, I wish that it was like the humanists teach. The universalists teach it, everybody's a child of God. Now let me stop and say everybody's a creation of God. But you're only a child of God when you get born again. That's by grace through faith. I wish it was so that just every kind of religion, any kind of uh, ideology could be embraced and that if you were sincere about that, you, you could make it to heaven. The only thing is Jesus said, I'm the way. I'm the truth. I'm the, nobody cometh unto the Father but by me. Jesus said, I am the door. John 10, 9. He said, the thief cometh up but to steal and to kill and destroy. But I've come that you might have life and you have more abundance. He said, I'm the door. By me, if any man enter in, said he shall be saved and go in and out and find pasture. Jesus said, I have the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. He's not an option. He's not some kind of a choice you make. Every man, all will send you to hell. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there's no other name given among men whereby you must be saved. Amen. For he came unto his own, and his own received him not. But to as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Wherefore God hath highly exalted him and given him a name that's above every name. At the name of Jesus, every knee should bow, every tongue should confess. That Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. No, it's not, it's not the religion of your choice. It's, it's not come as you are and leave as you was. Hey Amen. This is not some kind of Burger King religion. Have it your way. This is Wendy's religion. Old fashioned, hot and juicy. Hey Amen. Y'all listening? Not everybody's going to heaven. It doesn't excite me. It burdens me. It burdens me that I pastor in a town over 250,000 and in that town people are dying and going to hell and the majority of them, the majority of them will wake up in hell one day like the rich man. That bothers me. What bothers me is it doesn't bother y'all. We're getting used to it. Hell's real. Not everybody's going. I mean, man, we, we've tried to numb ourselves to the reality of hell. Everything's got flames on it now. I mean, when I was a boy, the only thing that had flames was a hot rod. 
Now people tattooing flames on their bodies and flames and devils and, and goats' heads and, and 666 and satanic uh, signia. Hey, look up in here. Hey, hey, people are numbing themselves to hell. Hell's real. Not everybody's going. Number three, he wants you to know this, that more people are going to hell than going to heaven. Let's look at the text. Many there be. You say, Brother Tony, we're a minority. Of course, we've always been a minority. Bible believers are a minority. As we get closer to the rapture of the church, it had one of those I Johns, uh, first, second, third John, he says, Oh, ye little flock. I'm for reaching the masses. Man, I'm excited about this building. Y'all could seat 1,500 in here if y'all do it right. I can't wait. I'd love to see y'all got more people in church than there is in the population of this city. Somebody help me. And it can be done. And it ought to be done. I'm thinking about moving my letter over here. Is everybody okay? Hey, hey, look up here. Look up here. I'm telling you more people are going to hell. bothers me. More people in this community are lost than are saved. More people in your family are lost than are saved. More people in America, one nation under God. And that God, when our forefathers, they wasn't talking about some, some Muslim God. They wasn't talking about some Buddhist God. They was talking about the God of the King James Bible. They didn't even know who Allah was. Amen. Amen. They knew something about God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. I need a little help. If I see y'all bowing on that, hey, it is Veterans Day. We'll set off a bomb in here. Is everybody okay? <laughs> One nation under God means the God of an authorized 1611 King James Bible. That's the God he's talking about. Here we are in a nation. More people are going to hell. This place has more gospel preached, more missionaries sent. The souls of North America have sent more missionaries to the foreign soul, have printed more Bibles. But what's the sad reality? Hey, with truth in our grip, with truth within our grasp, with salvation as close as a call on God, hey, this nation is going headlong into hell. And we're identified as the problem. That ultra-conservative right-wing Bible-believing. Y'all listening? There is a hell. Not everybody's going to heaven. More people's going to hell than going to heaven. Look at verse number 15. Beware of false prophets. The next thing he wants everybody to know in here, you saved, listen to me, as well as the lost. Hey, he wants everybody to know that some of these modern preachers will flat out lie to you. They're lying. They're lying about Jesus. I'm tired of people lying about Jesus. Jesus will save you. Amen. He'll, he'll take you as you are, but he don't expect you to stay as you were. Amen. Hey, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. I don't believe you can be saved and be a sodomite. You don't have to bow your head. I'm not ready to pray yet. Look right up in here. Amen. Hey. Hey, hey, he changes people. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. It's not the change that saves you. But the change is an evidence that you've been saved. I got some evidence I'm alive. I got born December the 6th, 1962. I was born. I got saved one day. And I got born again. There's some evidence I'm born. There's about 320. I'm in the neighborhood of 300 pounds. And it's a big neighborhood. Amen. <laughs> Somebody said, don't you hate being fat? I hate being hungry worse. <laughs> Amen. Stay with me. You're looking at evidence that I've been born. With or without a birth certificate, I, 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 there, there's, there's proof on this platform that I was born. How much proof you got to show you've been born again? As a newborn babe desires to send somebody to the Word. These false prophets are telling you it don't matter. Just, just, just say Jesus. Just believe in God. It's not some form of deity. It's a person we're saved in. 
Amen. It's, we're, we're, we're saved by trusting in a person. He's called the Lord Jesus Christ. He's called Jesus Christ the Lord. He's the King of kings and Lord of lords. He, hey, it's only one of him, praise God. Hey, there's not many doors, there's one door. These false prophets are lying to us. They'll lie to you. And what they're trying to do, their effort, I'm not going to stay here, but I, I see this often happening in, in our age. The effort of the modern day false prophet is to try to make lost people saved. That's making a, a good tree out of bad. That's getting good fruit out of a bad tree. Or trying to make saved people lost. They want to cast doubt on salvation. Doubt the Bible. Question the Bible. Correct the Bible. Try to make you doubt the Bible. If he can do that, the false prophet succeeded. And by his fruits, you'll know him. Yeah, his fruits are, he's no, hey, he's no fan of the local New Testament church. These modern day prophets. They have their own agenda. No authority of the church. They're, they're outlaws, renegades. Hey, I wouldn't listen to much preaching on TV unless it was your preacher. Unless it's come from this pulpit. Is everybody okay? God help a bunch of women preachers. God ain't never called a woman to preach. Ma'am, don't flinch on that, ma'am. I said, God ain't never called a woman to preach, and he never will. If, if any man desireth the office of bishop, he desireth a good work. Joyce Myers needs to grow some hair, praise God, hey, and get under subjection to her own husband. Is everybody okay? I've been sweet, but it's about time for me to take it by the throat now. Is everybody listening? Hey, 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 she's a false prophet. If any man desire, he desires the good, let him be the husband of one wife. Pray tell me how any woman's going to be the husband of one wife. It'll never happen. False prophets. Watch them. He wants you to know there's plenty of them. He wants you to know there is a hell. He wants you to know that not everybody's going to heaven. He wants you to know more people's going to hell than going to heaven. He wants you to know there's false prophets will lie to you. And tell you you're okay. Joining a church, signing a card. And they've been born again. Next thing he wants you to know is some people that think they're going to heaven ain't going to heaven. Now let me stop right here. I want to say parenthetically real quickly. If you're saved by grace through faith and the Holy Ghost indwells you, I'm not going to be able to talk you out of it. I heard J. Harold Smith preach three times God's three deadlines out there. It never, did, it never got to me because I was saved. I saw Sunday school teachers getting saved, deacons getting saved. I saw some preachers get saved on that message. Never shook me because I've been passed from death unto life. I've been regenerated. I got the witness on the inside. Hey, I've been baptized in the body by the Holy Ghost. I'm saved. If you're saved, I can't talk you out of it. But if while I'm starting to preach about right now, when I get to this point and you start getting uneasy, you better pick up the phone and say, here I am, Lord. Because there's some people going to be talking that, Lord, 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 Lord. Lord, did not we cast out devils in thy name? Did not we do many? It said many wonderful works. Not just a few good deeds. Not just coming to church on Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night. And by the way, you're not right with God if you don't come to all three services. Don't look down like you lost a quarter. Ain't nobody dropped nothing. Look right up in here. Don't tell me you're right. You ain't no more right with God than a jaybird is. Hebrews 10, 20, not forsaking the assembling of yourselves together as a matter of some is, but exhorting one another. Had so much the more as you see the day approaching. People's getting their heads cut off for Christ. Wars and rumors of wars. Earthquakes, famines, pestilence, fires. Burning up that liberal state of California. You don't see Jesus in that. You don't see a soon return. You don't see a, hey, you don't see a second coming pretty nigh. I doubt you're saved. I doubt you're saved. I got a right for my doubts. Amen. Look up in here. Hey, look up in here. I ain't through preaching. I'm talking about some people that think they're going, ain't going. I mean, what, what's, your, what's your credentials, you know? You cast out any devils lately? I didn't want to fool with them demons. I got a few deacons' wives I'm worried about. We anoint them with oil and then try to set them on fire. Somebody say amen. Offer them as a sacrifice. One of our deacons' wives wanted, well, she wanted to lay her tongue on the altar. 
We had to start a building program to make room for that thing up there. Everybody okay? Look up here. I'm talking about Jesus coming. Some people don't think they're going to go, but they're not going. They think they're going to go. Lord, when's the last time you cast out a devil? When's the last time you prophesied in his name? Prophesied in his name. What about did many wonderful works? I mean, y'all think you're a martyr if you come on Wednesday night. Oh, oh it's, uh, you go on Facebook. I've been so rough. I had to go to, I had to, go to prayer meeting. Serving the Lord so hard and everything, I had to go into an air conditioned building, sit on a padded pew, drink coffee, and eat donuts. Oh, it's so hard serving God. I had to go. I had to go Sunday night. Oh God, it's so hard. Here's a man casting out devils, preaching, and doing many wonderful works, and 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 he ain't gonna go. He ain't going. Some people think they're going, ain't going. He wants you to know that. He wants you to know there is a hell. He wants you to know not everybody's going to heaven. He wants you to know more people are going to hell than going to heaven. He wants you to know that these false prophets will lie to you. And he wants you to know that some people think they're going, ain't going. I'm looking at some people who probably think you're going, but you're not going. You got to talk down, man. You, you can put on a show. You'd make a good Hollywood actor. Get, cuss your wife all the way to church, cuss your husband all the way to church, and he get out in the parking lot. Good to see you this morning. We got the victory. <laughs> Hallelujah. The Lord good. Praise his name. Hallelujah. <laughs> your children are going, man, what is this, the twilight zone? <laughs> you bunch of teenagers living a doubled life. Double minds, a double, double minded man's unstable in all his ways. You live one way at church, live another way at school. You're mocking Christ, you're dragging his name through the mud, fornicating, smoking that grass. Amen. Talking that trash, drinking that mash, smoking that hash. Somebody help me. Living like the world lives, acting like the world acts. Listen to that rap out of hell music. I ain't got they, no, I don't know, understand why any white person listens to that, much less a black man. Somebody say amen. Y'all let rap straight out of hell. Straight out of hell. You, you consumed with that lifestyle. Hey, friend, you think you're going. If you got to ask your mama when you got saved, If you got to go check with a church clerk, make sure you got baptized. I wouldn't put much stock in that kind of stuff. Let me give you this. He wants everybody to know this. Are y'all listening? Everybody listening, say I. Some of y'all getting ticked off. You might as well get happy in the same bridge you got mad in. If you think, if you don't start acting like you like it, I'll stay in here another hour. I can make up stuff as I go along. You remind me of my wife sitting like a hissing. Pray and she'll get saved. Everybody all right? Watch it. He wants you to know that there's no second chances after death. We, we live in a world of second chances and, and do-overs and start over and let's do it again and, se- and, and, and well, he really didn't mean it and, and we get them off. Good lawyer get you off. Well, let me tell you, a good lawyer won't get you out of hell. Let me tell you what a good lawyer won't do. A good lawyer won't get you out of hell. Hey, 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 hey! Good lawyer won't get you out of hell. Johnny Cochran couldn't get you out of hell. Yeah, man. You get in hell, there ain't no second chance. Limbo. That's that's a lie. Purgatory, what the Catholics call purgatory. You go down into hell and purge all. That's a false doctrine. There's only two places you go. You go to heaven or hell. Heaven or hell. Heaven or hell. There ain't no second chances. And we get everybody calls in sick. I've I've, ev- I've evaded so many appointments. Man, I, I had a tooth. I had a toothache. Had a cavity. My mama's old timey. She acts like she puts on air. She acts like she's not. My mama's old fashioned. I mean, she knows what sign to cut your hair on. She cut my bangs on the shrinking of the moon. 
Looks like your mama did the same thing, sir. She got an almanac too, don't she? She, she'd take, I remember I was, I was, I was in about almost junior high and I, and I had a cavity so bad and it was killing me. And, she, and, she, and, I, and we couldn't go to the, the dentist till the first week, it's the weekend, about Friday. And it's throbbing, the wind hit it, y'all know what exposed nerves start killing. And she went in there and got a piece of cotton, got a toothpick and got some vanilla extract. Not imitation vanilla flavor, I'm talking about that McCormick vanilla extract. You know, it's, I mean, it's got skull and crossbones on the back of it. It's like 96 proof. And she took that cotton and jobbed it down in that cavity with a tube and then she doused it with that alcohol. Man, it'd numb it. I was walking around saying, Mama, <laughs> I believe I need a little bit more medicine. And she just put it, I'd numb it down, go, go, go numb. It helped. But Monday, she said, We're going to the dentist. Man, I got to think about that dentist. Dentists will lie to you. Dentists are liars. You're going to feel a prick. Feel a prick. Feels like a ten penny nail and a ball peen hammer drove upside your jaw. And then that old drill. You can smell burnt bone in the air. I got to think about that trip to the dentist. I said, Mama, Mama, the Lord's touched me. Mama, it's a miracle. It don't hurt anymore. By the way, where's that vanilla extract there? Hey, you've got out of a lot of appointments. Uh, tell them I'm not here. Tell them I'm out of the house. Uh, tell them I'm gone. Uh, but there's one appointment you're not going to evade. It's called death. It's death. Death is coming. Ain't no second chances. He wants you to know there's a hell. He wants you to know not everybody's going to heaven. He wants you to know more people are going to hell than going to heaven. He wants you to know false prophets will lie to you. He wants you to know some people that thinks they're going to heaven ain't going to heaven. Are you listening? That may be some of you. He wants you to know there's no second chances after death. And then he, he wants you to know this. Notice that last verse I read. He said, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. I never knew you. He wants you to know this. That this could be your last opportunity to be saved. And I say that in soberness. Because I'm reminded of a, of, a, of a time about seven years ago, I was, I was preaching in a meeting, I was sitting, sitting on the platform, and a preacher was preaching in front of me, and he preached a great salvation message. I'm talking about if I had been lost, I would have got saved. It was so good I wanted to get saved again, if it's possible. And I was thinking, man, surely people are going to come to the altar and be saved today. And when he gave the invitation, nobody came. I was sitting there. And he began to plead with the people, you've heard the message, won't you trust him today? Won't you trust him? And I saw a change in his demeanor. He went from humility asking people to be saved to abrasiveness. And it was almost like, you know, if you don't get saved. In fact, he made this statement. He said, we're going to sing one more verse. If you don't get saved, well, you'll just have to die and go to hell. And it made me mad. I thought if, if I was hosting that meeting and he's pastor, if he's preaching behind my pulpit, I'd have walked up there and snatched him out. Because I was thinking, you don't know that these people are going to die. You can't tell somebody if they don't get saved right now, you know, you're going to die and go to hell. You can't tell somebody that. You don't know they're not going to have. I, I was seven years under conviction. I, sh I could have died any time during that and went to hell. But thank God he extended another day. Amen. And I, I was so mad. Hey, Miss Collins, I was so mad. I thought, buddy, if, if I wanted to say something to the pastor. Like, you want me to set him down? I can set him down. <laughs> You know, somebody said, well, you're too, you're too fat to beat me up. You're too slow. Well, let's beat you up slowly then. <laughs> I could set the boy down. And he was mad, Robbie. He, he said, well, just go on and go to hell if you don't come on this verse. And while I was getting mad, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost began to move in my heart. He said, wait a minute, Tony. If he had got up there and said, now y'all just go on home and you can come back tonight and get saved. He'd have been just as wrong. That's true. 
He said, if you got up there and told him, y'all go, you don't listen to him, you just go on home, and you come back tonight, you don't know that they can come back tonight. I wish I could tell you that you've got years to be saved. I wish I could tell the saved in here that your family that's lost are going to live a long time and you're going to get plenty of opportunity to witness to them. But I can't tell you that. So often as a pastor, I get phone calls, so-and-so, my aunt just died, my uncle just died, my grandmother passed away. People in our church right now are, are on the teetering, on, on the line of death and life. I may get a call while I'm here of a church member, thinking of one right now. If I told you you had a lot of time left, I'd be wrong, because I don't know that. If I told you it was your last time to be saved, I'd be wrong, because I don't know that. But I know one thing. Something big as heaven, I wouldn't gamble on it. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Our pianos come. Nobody's looking. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Nobody's looking. Nobody's looking. If you know the Lord, Christians, I want y'all to start praying. First, first phase of this invitation is this. If you're a Christian and you're born again and God's burdened you about a loved one, a co-worker, a family member, a parent, classmate, why don't you just slip out right now wherever you are and just come on us all start praying for them to get saved this week. We, we don't know we got another week left, man. This nation, this world is coming to an end. Why don't you just come down here and pray for that person? Now here's the reality. These Christians are coming down. I wonder, Brother Derek, if some of these Christians are praying about somebody that's sitting here right now. I wonder if some of these Christians that are on this altar and these people are coming to pray for loved ones, I wonder if they're praying for you and you're here, you're seated, not somebody outside the walls, but somebody here. They're praying for you. I wonder if any of these people in this altar are praying for you right now that you'll be saved. There's a bunch of them down here, 60, 70, maybe more. I wonder if they're praying for you. If they're not, they're praying for somebody. Let me ask you to be honest. How many in your pews that remain in your pews? Obviously, these people know the Lord. They wouldn't be in the altar. How many of you remain in your pews and say, Brother Tony, I'm not sure if I died that I'd go to heaven, but I don't want to miss heaven. And if I can know it, I want to know it. I don't want to go to hell. I don't want to gamble on eternity. Would you pray for me? I'm not going to embarrass you by the uplifted hand. What you're saying is, I'm not sure about eternity, and I'm asking you to pray for me. Would you slip in and say, pray for me? I don't know about it. I'm not sure I'm saved. I'm not sure I'm saved. I'm not sure I'm saved. Be honest now. Be honest, it's serious business. I'm not sure if I died today, I don't have 100% peace in my heart. If I died today, that I'd go to heaven, pray for me. Would you lift your hand and say, pray for me? Pray for me. Pray for me. Thank you, sir. I appreciate your honesty. Anybody else like that, say, pray for me. I'm not sure about it, and I don't want to gamble on it. Hell's too hot. Heaven's too sweet to miss. Before I pray, you want to join this? Man? Thank you, young lady, for your honesty. Anybody else like that say, I want to join these two that raised their hand. I'm not sure if I died, I'd go to heaven, but I don't want to miss heaven. Anybody else like that, just slip it up, slip it right back down. Slip it up, slip it right back down. I'm going to wait on you just a minute. It's serious business, man. Thank you, sir. I appreciate your honesty. Anybody else say, pray for me. Pray for me. I'm not sure about eternity. Pray for me. I'm not sure. Just slip your hand right back up. I'm looking. Thank you, sir. I appreciate your honesty, young man. I don't want to miss heaven. Well, our Heavenly Father, you've seen these hands that have been raised. And you know the condition of the heart. And I'm praying right now, Holy Ghost, do what only you can do. And that's draw men, draw women. Let them see their selves lost. Let them see the briefness of the time span you've given us. And I pray today would be the last day they're lost. I pray they'd come to trust you today as their Savior. Christians are praying, heads are bowed. Let's stand together all over the house. Brother Derek's going to come down here and be in the front of this altar. He's got a Bible in his hand. And if you raised your hand that you're not sure, she's going to start playing invitation hymn, page number, page number. 123 if you need the hymn book. Hey, if God's dealt with your heart, you raised your hand, you're not sure. I'm going to tell you something. I know this is a big crowd, but you're among friends. We're not against you. We're for you. If you raised your hand and you're lost, you're not sure about eternity, why don't you meet Brother Derek right down here? Push your way out if you have to. Hey, eternity's too long to miss heaven.
Hell's too awful to endure. Why don't you come right now and meet this preacher? Page 123, as we sing together. Come every soul. Would you trust him today? The Lord wants to save you. The Lord, push your way out. The Lord wants to save you. Would you trust him? Would you trust him? Sing it now and only trust him. Lost friend, why don't you come? Young lady, why don't you come? Sir, why don't you come? Trust him. Listen at me real close while she plays. Listen, you know it's, a, it's, a, it's tension in the heart of mind of man when it comes to this decision. And it, it seems like if I can just make it out them back doors, my heart beating fast, this, this nervousness I feel, it'll go away. And you're right, it'll go away. It'll go away. I've experienced that. But the danger of that is a seared conscience. If, if Holy Ghost, if the Holy Ghost was dealing with my heart right now about being saved, listen, I, I wouldn't worry about my pride. I'd junk all of that stuff, and I'd come down here and see Brother Derek just as fast as I could get on this altar. While we sing this next verse, you mind the Lord. On the second verse, sing it out. The shed his precious blood, rich blessings to bestow. Plunge now. Come trust him. Come trust him today. Sing now and on.